Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Craig Groves. I lead artificial intelligence for NVIDIA um, for Health and Life Sciences for Europe. Um, and I've got a couple of minutes just to kind of position artificial intelligence today. Sorry, I'll just quickly go back. The, um, there's a dynamic that's going on in artificial intelligence that we'll talk about, which is around how um, CPUs and GPUs, how Moore's law is starting to kind of plateau, and this might be somewhat technical, but uh, GPUs are accelerating very, very quickly, and why, why it's becoming apparent GPUs are kind of very, very fit for purpose for artificial intelligence. Does anybody know who NVIDIA is? You, if not your children, will know who they are. Um, they're the ones who are playing Fortnite. Um, so NVIDIA is uh, very fort, um, kind of uh, big on the gaming side of things, on the CAD design, HPC, and obviously we've had lots of iterations around um, deep learning, machine learning. It's, uh, you know, it's been going an awful long time. It's not just something that's just been invented very recently. Um, more recently, though, NVIDIA has been getting invested in healthcare. Um, and one of our big um, kind of uh, projects, probably yeah, the single biggest project, that NVIDIA is working on is around transportation. Um, whether you want to call it driverless um, or to, uh, kind of driving, or whether you just want to ensure that from a uh, being in a car perspective, that you're completely aware, if you're slightly tired of all of the objects around you, the dogs that are crossing the road and those kind of things. So what, what's, what's very apparent in the world uh, between healthcare and transportation or automation is the idea of object detection and we'll, we'll talk a lot about that. Um, we're seeing many, many transformations in the world of artificial intelligence. Some of the big stuff that you know, we've all seen is things like Snapchat, Facebook, um, uh, all these kind of um, mobile devices that are starting to take into consideration your personal profiles. Amazon trying to push you things that you believe you want and sometimes do want and sometimes don't want. Um, where we're really starting to see the advancement and where the advancement is really going to be substantial is in the healthcare industry. So NVIDIA is investing, it's probably the second largest investment that NVIDIA is making is in um, the industry of medical imaging. When we get to things like autonomous AI, and especially in the healthcare industry, where we look at things like scoping, um, again, that's where we start to see some of the power of NVIDIA's technology to be on the fly while we're scoping, to be looking for areas of interest um, and being able to highlight those. Um, and probably one thing to clear off the books very, very quickly, there are a few people that obviously consider that AI is going to take over the role of a radiologist, a pathologist, or a clinician. Certainly, that's not an objective of NVIDIA. We're here to support um, the process of caring for patients, bringing supportive information to those consultants, to the radiologists, pathologists, to enable them to make better decisions. So there are some people that do feel that the, uh, the robots at some point will take over. Um, and people uh, who come from the healthcare industry will probably know most of all of these issues that we've got here. One of the, one of the key ones that I want to highlight is around regulation of technology. So we all know that the patient's increasing, we're getting older, we've got more comorbidities, all of that good stuff. The data sets, when we look at some of the new pathology, data, um, pathology images, um, are huge. Um, and take an awful lot, a long time to analyse those. We have to patch them up because we haven't got enough memory in the systems to be able to take one image and push that into a single GPU. There are delays in the results, and we know that from a lot of the news that we're talking about. Drugs, you know, we see a lot of um, challenges with the drug industry. You're always on the verge of bankruptcy unless they get that new blockbuster drug out. But one of the big things that, from, from my perspective of um, looking at NVIDIA and where artificial intelligence is going to go, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, um, is around regulations of the technology. Now, we've seen the NHS X come out recently with some quite good guidelines, which has been uh, you know, certainly a step forward. 
Um, but when we look at some of the clinical guidelines that come out, like HL7 fire, like the GA4GH groups for genomics, that are all coming together to kind of look at standards and see how standards are applied into the healthcare domain to be able to support um, patient uh, care delivery. We need exactly the same thing in AI. Um, the challenge I see for that in artificial intelligence is artificial intelligence is moving in an enormous rate um, and it will constantly move in an enormous rate. One of the, so one of the principles that we like to start talking about and how do we get from where we are today where there's a lot of fantastic companies and actually um, this, uh, you know, where we see some of the really good companies of the startup community um, and really the reason why we feel the startup community is so important, and again, one of our big objectives is building up the startup community, um, feeding them latest technologies, working with them very, very closely, um, and helping to support them to identify large commercial organisations that can then take on and work with those. And King's College London and their value-based healthcare system is a great example of that, where they've taken on a number of um, startup uh, there's a great one, Chiron uh, Medical. They've got a breast cancer algorithm. That uh, breast cancer algorithm has been tested um, and tested very well. So, the, so to the first point, one of the big things, and you know, um, doctors and clinicians in the room will know that multidisciplinary teams come together, review patients to understand what is the best uh, clinical pathway, what's the best treatment protocol we're going to do this for these patients. This is the same for artificial intelligence. We need the clinical teams to come together um, to understand, to help us to understand the clinical data. There are challenges in clinical data. We all know that wherever you are, whether you're using ICD-9, 10, if you're using SNOMED or LOINC or whatever you might be using. The data scientists and the researchers, they don't have the privilege always of understanding those dimensions in the clinical data. In some cases, some of, the, some of the codes in SNOMED don't really kind of fit properly, but that's just known by the clinicians, and the clinicians just get over that. But that's sometimes not very clear to those data scientists. So as a data scientist, you're going to weight things based on the evidence that is presented to you. And if you're presented with evidence that has got slight variation, you need to understand what that variation is so that you can weight it appropriately. And then from a technology perspective, again, some of these new technologies are very, very new to the IT teams and the technology teams. Bringing big graphical GPUs into their organisations, one, they're going to be wondering, are people just going to be sitting there playing games? And B, they look very, very different to their normal infrastructure that they're putting into place. So the IT teams need to understand what are they going to be delivered. Um, I used to work for a company called The Mapper Medicine many years ago. I uh, started it up with a very famous guy, Nat Billington. Um, and one of the things that we did um, with clinical pathways was have um, clear provenance of that clinical pathway. So where did that clinical pathway come from? At each point in the pathway, where was the evidence to say we should do this with this patient at this particular point in time? We went through the Royal Colleges... Royal Societies, NICE, Muir Gray, when he was working at the Information Centre um, to get these clinical pathways approved. Artificial intelligence is exactly the same. We are building models out of information that we're collecting, and we need to understand those models, where those models come from, what information is retained in those models, and in some cases, what is the bias that is in those models. Um, and we use an example of, um, if you look at King's College programme that we're working on, we have East London and we have West London, South East, South West London. So the demographics we have in West London, you know, fairly affluent, Qatari, Saudis, Chinese, Russians, you know, East London, a completely different mix. You might find three or four proper Londoners still living in Stratford somewhere. So the dimensions are very, very different. And that causes a bias. So if we're building models in West London, that means that those models may not be appropriate for East London. So those data scientists need to understand those biases that are being put into those models 
And when those organisations are ta taking that clinical liability to deploy those models at the point of care, they need to understand from that perspective what do they need to do to that model to make it fit for purpose for their particular organisation, for their particular region as well. So for me, provenance of those models is really, really key. Transparency of data, of course, we've got to comply to all the regulations, the governance, the ethics, um, the appropriate of, of use of that data. Um, if you look at the Path Lake project that's going on in the kind of uh, Middle England, including Belfast and Oxford, you know, the whole ethics program around how we're going to take previously gained ethics from patients and bring those ethics into the new program, well, actually, they're going to have to go back to those patients again and ask them to be, become part of that program. So the whole ethics of these programs has to be considered and thought through. Are we going to have to do that every single time? Um, the regulatory and governance. So one of the challenges um, with some of this model development, and we'll take Chiron um, as an example, Chiron's got a very, very good breast cancer model. They've been um, clinically trialling it for many years. Um, and actually, if you take some of their, they actually produce synthetic um, examples of breast cancer. And they've got quite an interesting um, test that they do uh, with consultants trying to test um, a positive, um, a, a kind of what we call a GAN, a synthetic image versus a real image. And they get some very interesting results. But the point is, if we find a new artefact, if there's some new science in breast cancer, and we have to re we retrain that model to include that new artefact in that model, do we have to go through the same governance and ethics process that we've been through to get that model clinically validated in the first place? Um, so that whole process of the FDA, of the CE, the accreditation process that these things have to, have to go through um, are enormous. And we have to make sure that they keep up with the rate of change, A, of the science that's going on in artificial intelligence, um, but also the rate of change that these models are going on. And so if you look, NVIDIA actually has around 400 startups just in healthcare alone, and they are developing at a rapid rate. We have 5,000 um, in total. So there are an enormous amount. And they're very, very disruptive in this industry. Um, so if you look at the pharmaceutical industry as an example, they're very, you know, their infrastructure is very unwieldy. It's been there for years. They're working off processes that are 20 plus years old. So it's very difficult for them to change what they're doing. So, but for these startup organizations, it's very easy for them to get hold of a laptop, one of the top you know, gaming cards, and start doing some of these experiments. So I just want to finish, because I know I haven't got much time, I just wanted to finish on our King's College London. So this is Seb Olson on, on the left, and uh, my handsome boss over there that I always have to mention. Um, so, you know, one of the largest artificial programs in Europe, as far as we're concerned, around disrupting 12 clinical pathways in oncology, radiology, uh, oncology cardiology, and neurology. And we're deploying it in initially four hospitals. The first hospital has started to take the first set of infrastructure. Um, and from a population set and a demographic set, it's a very, very wide demographic. And we're using this concept called federated learning, which means we don't move the, the data out of the hospital, which is a really, really key function of um, security and ethics around that data. So from an NVIDIA perspective, we're very, very proud to be part of one of the largest programs with this team. I just want to say thanks very much, and um, I'm here for the rest of the day if you'd like to chat. Thank you.